It might look cleaner. Even the, the lines themselves, the X and Y axis, they actually look looks like a little bit of a double line. It looks much better. So that's what I did there to get uh, this. I did a couple of other manipulations as well, but that's how I got this chart. Okay, now what about four means? If you're testing the hypothesis of four or more means. I've done a video before where I discussed that Fisher's LSD is only appropriate for three means or more, and it's a very good test in that case. But I've also sh tested the hypothesis what four means in a previous video. And the results are different because I did a two keys HSD as a multiple comparison procedure. And two keys doesn't actually need a one way ANOVA to be done first before looking at the two keys results. In fact, Tukey designed it to be a simultaneous testing procedure, also known as a single step procedure, which means that it doesn't need an ANOVA first. So what I've done here is I've I described the results again, just basically the descriptive statistics associated with the student confidence levels across the four teacher groups are reported in table one. And the table looks very similar to the one with three groups, but I've got this very low expectation group added to it. And I say it can be seen that the very low expectation teacher group was associated with the smallest mean level, and the high expectation group was associated with the numerically highest mean level. Again, I'm using the word numerically here very precisely. It's not, I don't know if it's statistically significant, but at least numerically, that's the trend in the means. In order to test the hypothesis that the four teacher expectation group means were equal, which is the null hypothesis, a series of single step, I could have said simultaneous procedure, two keys HSD multiple comparisons were performed. Now, you can look at Roger Kirk or other references to support you in the idea that Tukey's HSD is a simultaneous procedure. Now, if, you're, if you think you're going to confuse people, I, I do see a percentage of people doing it this way, not a lot. Uh, you could just add the ANOVA. Just add the ANOVA before the Tukey's HSD, like I did in a three-group mean. Most people do that, and then they follow up. If the ANOVA is significant, they do the Tukey's HSD. But you don't have to do that statistically speaking, so long as the difference between the largest and smallest mean in the Tukey's HSD is statistically significant, it's redundant to do the ANOVA. So prior to conducting the ANOVA, I need to satisfy assumptions and normality and homogeneity. Again, same way I did it for the three-group mean, reported in the same way, but the results are all obviously a little bit different for the Levine's test. Now, how are you going to report that many comparisons. You could write it in the narrative, as in the difference between low expectation and high expectation, and then report the result, and then just keep doing that in the narrative, but it gets very tedious. So instead, what I did is I created a table. As can be seen in table two, two of the four, two, what does that say? I should actually, I should say, four of the six comparisons were statistically significant. Furthermore, uh, furthermore, the statistically significant differences between the means were associated with moderate to large effect sizes based on Cohen's guidelines. Let's go look at this table. So table one is the descriptive statistics table. And then here I've decided to report all of the Tukey's HSD multiple comparison procedure results in a table. And what I've done is I've listed all the comparisons on the left side here. So and I've used acronyms. So this is very low expectation. And this is low expectation. And I've put a note under the table. And I write note. And that's italicized with a period. And I've also added sample size. N equal 25 for all groups. Then I add a semicolon. VLE equal very low expectations. LE equal low expectations. AE average expectations. Etc. And then I put D equals Cohen's D. I haven't put e p equal probability because pretty much everyone would know that already. So I've listed all my comparisons here, VLE to low expectation and average expectation to high expectation. And here are the p-values associated with those differences. Now technically two keys is, a Q is based on a Q statistic from memory and SPSS does not report the Q value, which is again disappointing. But here are the p-values, and we can see that 
the difference between very low expectation and low expectation 